Welcome to Concerning the Spiritual in Art, a podcast exploring spirituality, consciousness, and the creative process. I'm your host, Martin Benson. All right, y'all, welcome back to the podcast. Today I have Jared Freshman on, an artist, illustrator, and designer based in New York City. And we had an amazingly beautiful conversation today. Um, We began our conversation sort of diving into Jared's past, his history in terms of his art making and how he really began to identify as an artist from a very young age and how the relationship between his art, his sense of his own queer identity and his spirituality all became kind of intertwined over the years and helped sort of him cultivate a really incredibly powerful and beautiful art practice. Our conversations not only center around some of those topics related to his personal biography, but also in relation to sort of the wider culture that we're seeing and how this sort of change in our understanding of gender, fluidity and identity and spirituality is really starting to shift sort of the underpinnings of our culture itself. We talk a lot about technology and the ways that technology is influencing spirituality and also about astrology, divination, rituals in the studio, his understanding of his own color choices, his own personal color theory, so many places that we got to go to in this conversation. And I think y'all are going to enjoy it a lot. So here you go, Jared Freshman. Hey, y'all, I'm going to cut in here real quick uh, for all my YouTube viewers out there, just to remind you that the podcast also exists on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and any major podcast platform. So if you're enjoying what you're seeing here on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe on one of those platforms as well so you can take the show with you on the go and never really miss an episode. Also, I wanted to let you know that I'm now offering subscriptions on my Instagram page at Martin L. Benson for 99 cents a month. That's less than $12 a year, which that funding will go toward helping produce the show um, so I can continue to evolve the podcast, continue to create great content. So if you support what I'm doing here and are enjoying all this content here on YouTube, consider not only subscribing on the podcast platforms, but also subscribing on Instagram for that 99 cents a month so that I can continue on this path. So thank you all. Now back to the show. Peace. All right, Jared, welcome to the podcast, man. How are you doing today? I'm doing amazing. Thank you so much for having me, Martin. Yeah, so good to have you. I know like it took us a couple times to find, you know, a date that worked because I had a I had a kid that was sick and then I was sick. And so I'm just so grateful for you and your patience. I've been so looking forward to connecting with you. I absolutely love your artwork and sort of not only like the technique and the skillfulness of how you're rendering your images, but your color choices. There's such like an imaginative and explorative like ways in which you illustrate perspective, the ways in which you kind of express energy in a space, whether like I'm looking at this one over your shoulder, like the ways that you manipulated, like the smoke coming off of the flame, just there's so much playful approaches that you bring to your work. And they also have a very highly personal feeling to them. And I know like on your website, you speak to this and I figured this could be a good place for us to begin is sort of how your relationship to your queer identity, your spirituality and your art process, like how all those things are woven together and and sort of what was it on your journey that brought you to a place where you felt like you could combine all of that? OK, well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. This is amazing. I've been looking forward to being on your podcast all year, even though it really <laughs> just started. <laughs> yeah, well, um, but awesome. I, so I. I have always been very connected to my spirituality since I was a kid. I've always been a very spiritual kid. I grew up Jewish, but I feel like my own spirituality kind of really was outside of any type of religion or any type of like spiritual kind of like controlled practice, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I've always been very intuitive. And I think like creating was something that I started to do a lot of as a kid. Like I grew up with a really bad stutter. And I feel like uh, painting and drawing was a way for me to like communicate things that I could say and couldn't say um, on like a visual, like physical piece, Mm -hmm. like on a canvas, a wood panel, a a piece of paper. 
Um, but I think like the more I got further into my own art practice was the more I became more spiritual. I started to get more in tune with my own gender, my own sexuality. And I was finally able to like be this like higher vibrational version of myself. Like, a, you know what I mean? Like I felt yeah. like I, I, I feel like the more that I pushed my own spirituality and my own creative practice, like into one, like, I feel like it almost kind of like, like evolved with me. I mean, I've yeah. always been very spiritual. I've always been very creative. I mean, I've been making artwork, I guess, like seriously, like for myself and like trying to like make it a thing in my life since I was like 12, I guess. Nice. Wow. So I've been doing this for, for a very long time. Um, but I, it's so crazy to see where it's taken me so far. Um, so I never really thought it would get this insane. Um, but I, but I feel like when I grew up Jewish, I was very like attracted to the idea of a higher power. But I think my problem with the idea of God is how it's always gendered as he, him. Mm -hmm. I really don't like that a lot. I feel like that almost kind of plays on people's daddy issues and on people's <laughs> like, but it plays on people's but it also plays on like the like patriarchy, you know, mm -hmm. um, in a sense. And I think like that kind of really separate me from like being a part of any type of like religion, like Judaism. Yeah. Like, I feel like I've always believed in the idea of like the universe as a whole. But I feel like when I think of the universe, I don't think of like any type of gendered mm -hmm. being, you know, like, like, I feel like God is always drawn in the sky as like this, like older man, this like ghostly yeah. older man with a long beard and everything. <laughs> Yeah. And I just never like resonated with that. Like, what the yeah. hell is that? I know. <laughs> it's know? so interesting how that like that yeah. image has become like a real point of contention for a lot of people who don't really connect with their religion. And I would be I would definitely put myself in that boat as I've started to develop spiritually, too. It's like God is not this old man in the sky who's ready to like strike down on you and, and give you a feeling of guilt and, and expressing anger and all of that. Like, I just don't see God in that way. Like, I think it that's too limiting for this idea of what God can be. And so I think it can be that too, but it's like, God is so multifaceted. There's no gender, there's no image, there's no one thing that can really hold down God as being its uh, expression in this world, you know, it's everything, but it's, it's hard to, for us to break away from, from those gender norms, especially traditionally speaking, like in our culture, but we see in this past several decades, but really the past decade, like a huge shift in this experience of identity and recontextualizing what it means to be a person in this world. And I think that to me is pretty exciting. It's going to have, it's going to create a lot of problems too, in terms of like a, a disconnect in communication, because I think sometimes people don't, aren't real. They think they're talking about the same thing and they're actually not. But in general, I think it is a fascinating sort of new chapter in our culture and our ability to accept this more androgynous or multifaceted spectrum um, of gender. You know what I mean? So I think that's kind of interesting how that's really played into you. Can you speak a little bit more about that in terms of like finding your sense of identity, your sense of self through your through your gender, sexuality, and how like your own versions of spirituality might have emerged from that discovery of who you are? So I think like um, I've always been queer ever since I was a kid. Um, like I kind of came out as like being bisexual when I was like, 15 years old, I guess, or yeah, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I definitely am involved more with like men now, I guess it doesn't really matter. But um, I feel like my own sexuality, and like the idea of like spirituality kind of like came into it kind of came as a unified thing when I started reading tarot, honestly, because tarot mm -hmm. really talks a lot about both masculine and feminine identities you know yeah. um so you have the like the like uh the uh empress which is like a very creative woman very like divine femininity and um, then you have the like the uh the uh emperor which is like the like father figure you know yeah. the one who takes charge etc um so i think it's like a lot of times when you're reading tarot you kind of but you kind of embody all these different personas and mm -hmm. then people around you kind of kind of embody those masculine and feminine energies. Definitely. Um, and I feel like, then I feel like that kind of 
like like I feel like that itself can kind of pull your whole idea of gender apart in your head, I guess, because you're kind mm -hmm. of connecting with both masculine and feminine, which yes. I think everybody has, you know, hundred um, percent. but I think for me, but I mean, I would always say that like, like I feel like a man can never really try and leave, can never truly find peace until he connects with his own divine femininity, you know? Yes. Um, but, because I feel like masculinity can be so overpowering and toxic at times. And femininity can also be toxic at times. Like it really, Definitely. Like, like there's pros and cons to both, you know, but I think it's like we live in like the patriarchal society and like mm -hmm. we're expected to be some way as a man. I mean, I feel like for me, because of like the way that I look, I mean, I'm like, I'm, I'm like a broad kind of like muscular guy, like, like a thick guy. And I feel like I was always kind of expected to like play sports as a kid, play football, mm -hmm. play all these other things. And I was always a very creative kid. Like I would spend hours inside like drawing and I was always collecting crystals and everything, like looking out in nature, finding crystals and rocks cool. like around my, my, my like rivers and whatnot, like in Delaware, which is where I'm from. Cool. And I kind of, um, I don't know. I feel like I've always been a very kind of like creative, intuitive person. And I feel like I was always pushed into being like playing a masculine role, like mm -hmm. push into masculine activities as a kid that yeah. I, I felt like I was not aligned with. But even if I was to like, like enjoy it, I mean, I was obviously like, like a, a like gay little boy, you know, like I would, like, I feel like people would always pick on you on like the sports teams and stuff. And it's like, I loved baseball as a kid. Like I would play baseball all the time, but it's just like, you, you kind of have like a lot of these people kind of ruin it for you. Yeah. And I think like with me, like I really kind of want, my own artwork to like make space for other queer people as well yeah. like, make space for them kind of like being a part of this like spiritual practice being a part of like like expressing themselves um then the idea of spirituality because i feel like it's almost kind of torn from us because i feel like a lot of these um these like organized religions they're like so like 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 unaccepting of like queer people mm -hmm. like i feel like a lot of times we are pushed away from our own spirituality we're pushed away from like connecting to a higher source yeah where it's like I feel like a lot of times there's like this new age of a lot of queer people kind of connecting with that source but like in their own homes like yeah. whether it's doing things such as divination with tarot cards you know med meditating like a uh, astral projection etc yeah you know um astral travel so I think it's like I feel like a lot of queer people are, are almost kind of connecting with their own spirituality in like a much different way now. Yeah. That was yeah. kind of a little bit long and drawn out, but I hope that's... No, I think it's so exciting. <laughs> yeah. I think to me, that's so exciting and so interesting because yeah. I think, you know, when we, when we look at like the history of religious institutions, they're always corrupted by power and they're always corrupted yeah. by a sense of control, which is obviously a part of the bastardization of the ego. You know, the ego wants to control everything. And I think um, mm -hmm. a lot of these religious institutions have been hijacked by, you know, people or systems that want to have a certain level of control or power. And in that process, by, you know, by marginalizing other people, it gives them more power too. And it, you know, through fear, through dominance, dominator culture kind of mentality. And I think what we're seeing now is a liberation of spirituality. And I think a lot of it has to do with the internet and our access to information and books and esotericism, like things that we would have never had access to, Jared, if we grew up a hundred years ago, 150 years ago, unless we just happened to grow up in a town where there was some mystic there who had incredible occult knowledge and you happen to like want to learn under them. You know what I'm saying? It's like now we have like the history of the occult, of the spiritual traditions, the mysticism at our fingertips, which I think is a double-edged sword, right? Because because mm -hmm. um, this stuff isn't isn't always um it's not all love and light all the time, you know, there's some darkness out there. And so we have to be skillful and thoughtful and wise in the way we engage with spiritual practice, because there are certain things we can understand and certain things we can't. But I think what you're pointing to is kind of a liberation of people to democratize spirituality beyond the confines of the institutional frameworks that we've been used to. And I think we're almost like in this space and time where we're redefining and reorganizing new way modes of spirituality and spiritual connection, kind of like what you're speaking to in terms of like divination practice or really looking into meditative practices or plant medicine or 
thinking about consciousness, you mentioned astral projection, like lucid dreaming. It's like, we can now have access, I think, to these spiritual dimensions of ourselves in ways that we might not have had access to previously. And so we're going to see this burgeoning new culture. And I think that's kind of what we're seeing now in a lot of ways. And when I look at your artwork, I'm curious, like, I love just how vivid they are, how crisp and clean and, you know, like your level of execution and attention to detail is, is so pristine and, and so imaginative too. the way you play off of certain forms, the way you express space. I'm curious for you, like, in terms of expressing your spirituality through your art making, what kind of imagery do you tend to go to in order to express like spiritual principles? Is it like multiple multifaceted in terms of your symbols or imagery? I can pick up definitely plenty of them when I look at your work, but I'm just curious from your perspective, like consciously, like what kind of spiritual symbols are you creating or are you adapting to your work? So um, like, I feel like my work is kind of a representation of myself and then also like from like pieces of media I've seen or things that I'm manifesting for myself or other people um it, it definitely kind of goes a lot with like my own self and like what's outside of me I feel mm -hmm. like um but I think like I take inspiration from all different types of things whether like I was saying in terms of personal experience like I've dealt with like a lot of loss so I feel like a lot of times I would like kind of channel the idea of spirit into my work, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of comes through in the idea, that kind of comes through with like my color theory, I would say more than anything. Yeah. Um, I feel like, like, like my, my black and white drawings. So basically like my whole process behind my work is I do a black and white drawing on my sketchbook or like on an iPad. Um, and I will then transfer it onto like a piece of paper or like a piece of wood. Um, and I will then like use color pencil or paint depending on what I'm feeling. Um, but I feel like my own color theory kind of goes a lot with like the idea of chakras, the idea mm -hmm. of like different types of, co of like, color energy, you know? Yes. Uh -huh. um, and I feel like I kind of connect with spirit through color, I feel like more than anything. Mm -hmm. um, like I love just like doing my like black and white drawings, but I think like my 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 color process is what has like, really brought all, all the flavor and excitement to my artwork yeah. over the years um so i feel like a lot of the times like like if i'm connecting with like more of like a spiritual type of like intuitive side of myself like i may use purple versus than blue versus like red and orange yeah, or something yeah, cool. or if i'm like manifesting or if i'm manifesting more like love and like sexuality like passion i would use more of like red oranges pinks etc mm -hmm. um so it kind of goes back and forth. Like, I feel like color is a very visual thing, but it's also a very like energetic thing. And I feel like Definitely. nobody really ever talks about that. Mm -hmm. um, like, I think that's something that like a lot of color theory courses in like art schools kind of miss out on because yeah. I feel like art is such a spiritual thing. And like, like even design is such a spiritual thing that I think it's like, how are we going to be able to use color like outside of what visually looks good and what feels for yeah. us? Like, how does this feel for us? You know? definitely um, like I like I think like one way that I draw is I kind of replace value with like color hues so mm -hmm. instead of like trying to make things darker I'll like add a color that's like next to it and yeah maybe like make it a little bit lighter or, or darker with it you know um so like I feel like a lot of my most recent work I've been kind of using a lot of more of like purples pinks blues oranges kind of yeah um, like I was like like in a whole kind of green era for a bit I think like that was me kind of like opening up my like heart chakra and now yeah. I'm like kind of like working more with like colors that are more so um with like the higher chakras you know you're like yeah. crown chakra, mm -hmm. third eye etc so I, I feel like that's kind of like allowing me to like get to that point um but I like I also take a lot of love pieces of media that I loved as a kid growing up like I loved a lot of stuff from like the early 2000s and the 90s like I think uh just like media back in the 2000s was so gendered it was mm -hmm. like very like this is like but, but like this is a show for girls this is a show for guys it's like a yeah. male musician a female musician like I feel like like um our media was so gendered but it was also so colorful then because mm -hmm. I think now with like TVs and technology like like colors were, were they were so saturated they were so juicy like like they weren't as pale 
and as bland as they were on TV yeah. years before that, you know? Yeah. So, um, but I think there was like a lot of things, like I remember growing up and going to like the like video stores. Um, Blockbuster. <laughs> Yeah, but like, but like Blockbuster, but I grew up um, in a small town called Hocassin, Delaware, and we had like our Hocassin video store that I would go to. (laughs) Um, And all the 2000s um, DVD covers and VCR covers, they were always so like colorful, even for like the like very, very adult films, you know, (laughs) and like when you're really young, you like kind of gravitate towards that but like your parents are like no 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 you can't watch that it's like rated yeah. r whatever or it's unrated <laughs> so i think it's like one thing i've been doing during the pandemic is kind of uh healing my own inner child by like watching a lot of the things that i saw in like the video store or online or in previews and stuff on tv growing up um and i feel like like in a way for me to like heal my own inner child i've been able to like raise my own vibration like i've been yeah. able to like make more peace with myself like um, so I feel like in that way, like art has, t- has helped me, me evolved spiritually, like emotionally, yeah, uh, gender, like sexuality. Like, I feel like that kind of all kind of went with that. Um, wow. but I, so I kind of like would tap into like a lot of like certain things that I've been like discovering now. Like I feel like during the pandemic, like we had so much time on our hands. Like I was watching a lot of old 2000s stuff, just like old 2000s movies that I wanted to like always see. Um, and I really like loved how like over the top gender was then. And I feel like, like, like just like rewatching a lot of older stuff. I feel like a lot of the old 2000s and 90s movies were like so queer coded, like Romeo and Michelle's (laughs) high school reunion, Uh, dude, where's my car? Yeah. All these, but like, they were all so like queer coded. Like, I feel like a lot of the characters were like, obviously kind of like little bisexual or like even kind of gay. And I think it's like, maybe, but like, maybe like we had to have that like over top be like over the the top period to like actually um be where we are now yeah um, in society with like gender and sexuality you know yeah definitely i think sometimes when things get to like an extreme it like it reveals its absurdity you know like one of the Mm -hmm. extreme like you were talking about like hyper gendered like films from like the 2000s or 99 my mind goes to like the films like the american pie films which are like so oh my God, yeah you know what i mean like there's so like yeah. there's probably some coding in there too for sure but like you know like these masculine Definitely, roles yeah. versus these fem- feminine roles and you know and i think it's important to have those kinds of roles too but we also have to acknowledge everything in between and like there you know everybody whoever you talk to i feel like is going to be on some kind of spectrum of masculine and feminine energy like we talked about previously mm-hmm. like i i 100% agree with you jared like every single person has masculine and feminine energy inside of them and they manifest in various ways. A lot of people suppress one over the other for various reasons related to trauma or personal upbringing or whatever. But when you can integrate the masculine and feminine energies within yourself, that is really a big part of what healing is about. The healing process of your consciousness, the raising of your vibration is all about acknowledging the multifaceted, energy systems of your own being, which are related to the masculine and feminine qualities um, inside everyone. And when you don't suppress them, but you embrace them and embody them and integrate them, this is where I feel I'm my, my full self. And I feel like in my own personal life, my feminine energy comes out through my creative process, just the, my obsession mm-hmm. with creativity and, and sort of that process. But I feel like it also in both ways, both my feminine and masculine energy, like really were heightened, uh, becoming a father, you know what I mean? This feeling of like unconditional love, compassion, care, sacrifice, this feeling of emotional connectivity on like deep fundamental levels with my children. But then also the masculine side of like the protective principle, like, Oh my God, I have to take care of these little kids. And so I need to be like, I need to have my masculine energy in check too, for the sake of like security or safety. And so for me, it's like this journey as a parent has really brought me even deeper into this exploration of my own masculine and feminine. Um, So I think that stuff is so important. And I think when we get into these transcendent spaces, they are beyond gender. You know what I mean? Like they are beyond these things. Like gender is a way of which I think makes the world so, colorful and beautiful and amazing you know all the spectrums of sexuality and gender i think you know i'm always been just straight up 
freedom for anyone to be exactly who they want to be, yeah. how they want to be. Like it is your life to live and it's not anyone's job to be a judge upon someone else, especially if they don't cause any harm to anyone. And that's one thing that pisses me off the most in parts of our culture that we're seeing in retaliation against um, queer culture and identity and the expression of it is like, there's this bigotry to it. You know what I mean? There's this judgmental mm -hmm. component to it. There's not like a sense of like, trying to understand or trying to relate or trying to find ways to connect with people who might think differently than you. And I think we need that more than ever. And I feel like your art and artists in general is such a great way of trying to build dialogue and, and connection to these things, right. To be able to have conversations, you know, like you mentioned earlier mm -hmm. that you feel like your art is kind of made for a queer audience about expressing this new way of like, of exploring spirituality. I was curious if maybe we could like dive into some of your work specifically. Like I'm looking like over behind your head and the one we talked about, I guess it's over your right shoulder with the candle flame. Yeah. Could you yes, speak yes. about with the mourners and has the mourners Kaddish um, in oh, yeah, there yeah. in Hebrew. Um, could you maybe speak to so, that particular piece? Cause I, I just think it's interesting for people maybe to hear. So, um, the piece next to me, um, if you're watching on YouTube or any video platform, <laughs> um, but it is a piece titled The Soul Candle, um, which, so basically a yard set candle, trans but it basically translates into The Soul Candle in English, uh, Ner Neshama. Um, and, and I've been through like a lot of loss over the years. I like lost my dad. Mm -hmm. Uh, my grandparents, friends, et cetera. Um, and so so basically, like when my grandmother passed away last year, the sky literally turned purple, which is wow. something I've never seen before. And, and she was a very, very spiritual person. She was uh, this like beautiful, like Turkish, Spanish, Jewish woman who um, was very spiritual. She had like a lot of evil eyes everywhere. And I've never seen the sky turn purple before. And now I'm like, okay, like I feel like this is my symbol that she reached enlightenment, you know? Mm. So I think like, like I think since that one experience, I kind of tapped in a lot with like, yeah, with the color purple a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so I was kind of tapping into like that idea of like reaching enlightenment and kind of having like, a, like a lot of different uh, spirits and like um, kind of like symbols of like my like ancestors kind of coming out of this candle. Mm. Um, and so I feel like a lot of the times, like with like modern types of candle practitioners, like, like for like candle magic, it's like a very similar thing to like working with a, a, uh, yard site candle, you know, yeah. for like, for loss, you know, it's like, you're like praying on this candle, you're like connecting with your ancestors, you're praying for healing. But I think it's like one of those things where it's like, one thing that I think that I, if I just think most organized religions kind of lose is the idea of manifestation. I think it's like a mm. lot of like praying and like, and, and like releasing, but it's like, you're not really like manifesting anything mm -hmm. with that energy. So I think like with the idea of like working with a candle, um, like I like to work with my ancestors, not only for like healing myself and for like mourning, but for like manifesting better things for myself manifesting mm -hmm. better things for like my family now or my people now um like i think like that's such a missed part of like the like energetic process of spirituality and like yeah, praying and definitely i feel like it's like i think it's like we're like in this morning state so much like when are we going to use this like energy for for us and to help heal ourselves and heal other people you know like mm -hmm. how are we gonna like instead of like like i think that's like I think that's one part of me that has not connected with like fully to like Judaism with the idea of like mourning and like Yom Kippur and you know like I think it's like are we gonna stop beating ourselves up so much or like are we gonna actually use this energy to manifest something you know mm, so yeah. yeah no that makes that makes great sense and I I agree I think yeah. it's like you know the idea of prayer sometimes I mean like growing up like thinking about prayer like prayer was always about like you know, it was an opportunity to speak with God, um, to ask mm -hmm. for things or to pray for certain outcomes or qualities. And that definitely was a part of it. But like, it was never concrete in the manifestation aspect of like meeting God halfway and like creating a vision for your life and trying to even like Literally, ask for yeah. guidance to cultivate this vision for your life 
and then taking those steps to manifest it. Like manifestation, I think us as artists, like this is our whole world. I mean, we're taking ideas and images and feelings within ourselves and we are literally manifesting into tangible forms for others to experience and see. So like this is a huge part of our, our reality. And I think there's something powerful about being connected to that process of manifestation. Um, whereas people who maybe don't have a creative process or creative outlets don't typically get access to the magic of what that's about. And so finding ways to give people permission to feel, feel a sense of like a vision for their lives and to take steps toward manifesting is so important. But a lot of times, you know, in our own minds, it can be so easy for us to have a self doubt, you know, or a feeling mm -hmm. of like, Oh, that's just too big of a dream. That's not going to be possible. This feeling of like, we're not good enough you know, for that vision. And I think we need to be able to throw all that shit away and dream big, dream big, you know, like that's what I yeah. always tell people dream big. And then as it becomes more of reality, then yeah, things might have to go by the wayside. You have to cater to the universe in some sense, like you can't have it all, but if you don't dream big from square mm -hmm. one, you're never going to have any opportunity to, to build anything great. And so we have to Literally, have that, yeah. that quality. But back to like uh, the, your Judaism and stuff, I think it's, you know, I grew up Jewish. I definitely identify as a Jewish person. I don't go to temple all the time, but I try to like keep track of all the holidays and I do Shabbat and I, I find there's a deep connection that I'm building toward my Judaism as I mature. Um, and I'm especially interested in, in Jewish mysticism and Kabbalah and sort of like this sort of history and lineages of Jewish mysticism that were never really taught to me growing up. Like I never had access to this dimension of my own religion that, you know what I mean? Like I never knew existed. So mm -hmm. for a long time, and I still am, was very drawn Easterly, you know, to, to uh, Veda, the Vedanta, to Buddhism, uh, the Tao mm -hmm. and doing meditative practices, learning about metaphysics and like, going this deep rabbit holes of my own spiritual journey to explore this, the nature of my own consciousness. And then now as I'm getting older, I'm like, after continuing to learn all that, I'm starting to dive back into my Judaism again. And I'm learning so much about how these things are so connected and like the wisdom and the metaphysics of, of Tibetan Buddhism mm -hmm. or in, uh, certain aspects of Vedanta, like the Vedic culture, Hindu culture are a hundred percent in alignment with the teachings of the Zohar and Kabbalah. It's like blowing my mind. Dude. Yeah. It's amazing. Uh, but I think we, I think our time, and you might agree with this, is asking for new expressions of spirituality of like not throwing away the old, but finding a way to integrate and evolve the traditions of spiritual practice and metaphysics and finding a way to integrate them into our contemporary culture on mass. Cause I think something mm -hmm. about our consumerist culture is definitely divorcing a lot of people from their connection to their spirituality. And so I think it begs the question, like how do we initiate on mass people into reconnecting with spiritual dimensions of reality. Totally. Yeah. yeah so I'm I mean, curious. I definitely yeah. think mm -hmm. so. I mean, like um, so outside of my, uh, my, my art practice, I'm very much into astrology. I just wanted to like bring this in because I feel yes. like you keep talking about how we are moving forward um, in a more technological, almost spiritual way. So right now, um, Pluto, which is a planet that uh, represents transformation, death, um, power is at the last degree. So basically, like, like um, with astrology, like, like it takes twenty nine degrees for for a sign to like basically change. So like yep. when a planet moves into a new sign, it takes twenty nine degrees. So we're at the twenty ninth degree of Capricorn right now, and Capricorn. Um, so like. So like, like, like in astrology, when Pluto goes into Capricorn, it's like hyper capitalism. It's mm -hmm. over the top. People are working their asses off, not making much money and everything, like struggling to like keep their head above ground. OK. Yep. Um, and the 29th degree is also a very <laughs> karmic degree. So what we're seeing is a lot of karma from like this past decade of this. So like we have had um, it's actually been been like been uh, over 10 years, but like we have been 
we've had Pluto and Capricorn since 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 two thousand since two thousand eight during the during the crash. Wow, um, that's and when Pluto so, like, entered I Capricorn. Feel, yeah, that was when Pluto wow. entered Capricorn was in two thousand eight. So that was kind of when we kind of entered this new era, and I think we're at this like last tipping point where a lot of people are being exposed. Like twenty nine is also a degree that is ruled by Leo, and Leo is all about like fame and like kind of like having yourself in the public eye and mm. i think it's like a lot of things are coming to light like stuff with like the like jeffrey epstein trial mm -hmm. like stuff with like donald trump different celebrities being be, being fraudulent etc you know yeah, yeah um and and the whole energy of like pluto and aquarius is much different than capricorn so aquarius is all about technology it's all about gender neutrality it's all about spirituality like togetherness oneness you know yeah. and i think we're almost kind of seeing this more so on like a technological side with like social media kind of have kind of having a whole different realm of people connecting on that way um but also people kind of connecting with their own spirituality again i guess i feel like during the like, pandemic a lot of people felt so like hopeless that i feel like they were kind of reconnecting with that self yes um with that sense of self in terms of like connecting with your own spirituality um but I also even feel like now during like this like really karmic period where like Pluto is at the last degree of Capricorn be before it goes into Aquarius later this month like I really feel like a lot of people are also kind of dealing with like their own karma from like the past 10-15 mm -hmm. years and they're like kind of connecting with their own spirituality now because of that you know yeah. so I think it's like like I feel like in a sense it's like we're moving in a more technological um spiritual direction um that we have never seen before. Like, I feel like spirituality was always kind of kept, as you were saying, in terms of keeping it thin, like organized religion, you know, mm -hmm. but like, now it's like, like I had our fingertips on our phone, on our laptop, on our iPad, whatever, you know? Yeah, um, exactly. You so, can learn. So I feel like, no, yeah, keep going, keep like, going. it's pretty crazy. Um, but I think that, like, I think it's like getting really exciting, but it's also getting kind of scary with like AI, you know mm. like what is ai gonna do for us you know but it's like i always always i was hoping for like ai to help me like do my taxes and like send out mass <laughs> emails like but like i never asked for ai art like who is asking for like ai art you know i know right like i just don't like i feel like that's like the one thing where i'm just like why did we go straight to ai art like why didn't we have like ai like ways of of doing other things that are really difficult, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's like, we're also dealing with like a lot of like really crazy stuff of like AI um, viruses, schemes, things that are fake, you know, definitely. Things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you hear about these, yeah. like these, the, these latest, like kind of uh, schemes that people are doing where they somehow get like a snippet of your voice and then they can use it to say anything. And yeah. by calling people like, for ransom money, like saying that they have like your loved one, crazy. like it's just so creepy and crazy. And I agree, like AI is a huge question mark in terms of like, what direction are we going to take this technological revolution? And I think that's why like yeah. the spiritual consciousness is pushing through more and more and more than maybe it ever has on mass culture, because mm -hmm. we need some kind of wisdom of the cosmos to help guide us through this very treacherous transition that we're, I feel like we're going through technologically with things like the internet, social media, the emergence of AI. Like we need to step back a little bit and get a sense of like, where are we actually going? What are we, what kind of world are we actually creating? And are we a part of this process of creating it? Or are we just going to be handing it over to these AI models that are going to create a world based off these, I don't even know how AI works fully. The machine learning algorithms that they do is that, is that really going to lead humanity toward more peace and happiness, prosperity, freedom, or is it going to lead us towards like the matrix or the terminator or some shit? And so you yeah. get definitely a lot of people Literally. who are blowing the whistle on this, who are really worried about it. I don't know what to think. I mean, I think at any point in time, you know, a, a large solar flare could hit the planet and cut off all of our electronic grids. And so then what we're back to cavemen again, you know, it's like, we're back to just yeah. like raw reality. And so are we prepared for that societally? And I, I know hundred percent we're not because most people wouldn't know what to do, you know? But I also feel like <laughs> that, that whole idea of having a solar flare is like, 
Sure. Like I was talking, if I was talking to my family about this recently, I think it's like everybody is always so concerned about the like end of the world. Like, like if you, but if you are very much, but if you are not knowledgeable of like art history, like you are very much aware of all the different types of art pieces over the years that have talked about the like end of the world for thousands of years. Like there's, yes. there's pieces I'm sure done by the cavemen who have talked about the apocalypse or yeah, like Armageddon the end of or days. whatever, mm -hmm. you know? So, but I think it's like, I think like with technology, there is a lot of fear mongering, if I'm being honest, like, like especially spiritually. I mean, you see that a lot on like TikTok, for instance, you see a lot of like fear mongering, like certain astrological events or certain things happening in society. Um, but like, I think that's like one of the, one of the tough spots about technology and like it getting so big is that like, there's a lot of information that's, but like, like there's a lot of false information that is spread so easily, you know, yes, so yes. like more conspiracy theories, you know, yeah. um, just like more chaos surrounding like the apocalypse or the end of the world. But I think it's like, but like, imagine how like people must've felt like in the sixties, for instance, or like during world war two, like they probably felt like it was the end of the world too. You exactly. Know? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Like they probably all thought it was the like end of the world. But I think, I think people are just scared of change. And I think yeah. that's like when people kind of feel like the end of the world is coming, you know? But I think it's like maybe that world that we were all in is over and we're in a new world. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like maybe yeah. we have transgressed towards like older problems. Like, like Martin, but if things weren't getting better, then like, wouldn't, then like, how would we have not solved all the problems we've solved now? You know, like yeah. how... Like, like, that's my whole thing is like, if things weren't getting better, then, then, then like, would we not be solving any problems? And I feel like we are solving some problems. Yeah. It's like, there's always going to be problems. Humans are not perfect, you know, yep. but it's like, I don't know. Like, I don't think the end of the world is coming, but I think it's like, you see a lot <laughs> in the media yeah. in terms of like that one new movie. Um, what is it? It's a uh, leave the world behind. I watched that with yeah, my family yeah. during, uh -huh. during, during Christmas break. Um, but so crazy like I I don't know but like but like what's scary about that is like how like Barack Obama and Michelle are both like involved with it you know like like I'm just like but is this like like a piece of propaganda are they warning us but at the same time it's like didn't we also have like these like war warning things in like the 50s and the 60s like yeah. didn't we have this propaganda then you know yeah um no it's so interesting I don't know like fear is so powerful you know what I mean? Like fear the ability... is like way too powerful. <laughs> yeah, it really it's way is. too powerful. And powerful, yeah. powerful structures and institutions and conglomerates of powerful people know how to utilize fear in order to enact control. And I, I think I'm in agreement with you, man. Like in terms of like this feeling of like the end of the world, I feel like every generation that ever lived probably had that feeling of some kind in some way. You know what I mean? Like. I feel like what yeah. we're dealing with is not anything new. It's maybe just a par for the course for being alive on this planet is this feeling of constant yeah. dread that like the world could end. And I think that anxiety inducing feeling from it can really control the behavior of people unless you can learn how to transcend the fear of death, which is very difficult to do, maybe impossible to do. Ultimately, you don't really know if you've ab obliterated your fear of death until death really comes knocking on your door, you know what I mean? Like you might have experiences Literally. where you feel like you've transcended the fear of death um, through like, you know, mystical experiences, psychedelic experiences. But at the end of the day, yeah. you won't really ever know fully until the moment actually comes. And I think that's one thing that we can all count on, you know, is that death will come for all of us. And so if we can acknowledge it and get in touch with it, and see the beauty of it earlier than later, we can live our lives way more fully and we can live our lives hopefully um, without so much fear, you know, that's controlling our impulses. Totally. Um, but it's, you know, it's just, it's just a part of life. And for me, like one of my favorite sayings ever, I forget who, who it was. Maybe it was like Terrence McKenna or it was like, timothy leary or someone like that basically they said like oh death it's it's perfectly safe <laughs> death is perfectly safe dying is perfectly safe you know like meaning that like it's just something that's so natural that we all do it we is, all, it everyone is. will do it everyone's done it and so like anyone who's come before you has walked through that door you're gonna walk through that door and it's all good 
Um, but what we need yeah. to f- focus most on is what we can do here and now with the time that we have, you know? And I think the uh, investment in spirituality and spiritual connection, I think, pays dividends. Um, and so the more we can do that and find our own personal means of of uh, digging into our spirituality, the better off ultimately I think we will be. And I think these new expressions of spirituality are going to be really important because I think they're going to give people a doorway into that that might not have been able to access it previously, whether it's through astrology Mm -hmm. or the tarot or learning about metaphysics of the East and the chakras or doing deep meditative dives or breath work or psychedelics or just prayer, ecstasy, dancing, whatever, you know? And so it's, uh, it's definitely for me, it gives me a lot of excitement. And I see so many artists like yourself who are unapologetically acknowledging their spirituality, unapologetically aligning their art practice with their spirituality in ways that, you know, for a long time was a little more taboo, um, at least in the Mm -hmm. Western art world, you know, people are more open to this stuff than ever. And I think to me, that's another sign of something percolating in the background around our culture that's hopefully going to open us up into a new paradigm of consciousness that drives the decisions our culture makes collectively, because we obviously need a new consciousness there. The old guard is not working out for, for most people. Um, But to your point, yeah, things are, I think on a larger arc are getting better, right? Like you would much Mm -hmm. rather be alive today than uh, you know, 500 years ago, yeah. Um, just based on access to food and shelter and health care and all of that. Um, totally, totally. But yeah. we still need to, but, uh, but we still need to find like this sort of new pathway forward. I think it almost feels like the old guard is just like, they're, you know what I mean? They're starting to kind of fall off. And so the, in that process, they're holding on even tighter to their control and to their power where it's time for them Mm -hmm. to kind of let go and let a new generation of voices come through and help kind of carry the torch forward. Um, even how, albeit how clumsily we might do it ourselves too, you know? Yeah. So totally. I mean, I mean, I definitely think that, um, like that, like element of fear that like the older generation is always going to have, like, I think that's just like how like humans are, you know, they don't Mm want to let go. So I mean, like, like even people that are very much in tune with, with their, with their spirituality, I, I still think that like the element of fear with death is always going to be a thing, you know? Yeah. Um, no, definitely. So, but I mean, I, like, I just feel like we're, I think like, like a big reason why this whole kind of like Pluto and Capricorn generation, like this hyper capitalism thing is kind of ending right now is um because of cell phones like i think it's like people all have the power in their hands to Mm -hmm. say and do whatever they want online like there's really no one group that is kind of overpowering everyone now um like i feel like we're even seeing this now with like the government kind of feeling powerless towards their own people you know it's like people are able to do and say whatever they want online um where it's like maybe people are starting to listen to like each other more than like who's above us on on tv you know yeah um we're definitely so i think that's like something yeah but i think it's like we're like all kind of connecting with each other in a new way that um is almost bringing us together in a much different way than we have been but i think Mm -hmm. it's also making us wake up to like how a lot of the things that we think are normal are like actually very like um very very toxic for us you know in terms of like stuff in the media um the way that like the way that that our government has like been like treating us you know Mm -hmm. so it's like it's interesting to see what's going to come from how technology how technology is going to expand over the next 10 15 years you know yeah definitely Um, no it feels like it's accelerating it is accelerating and i feel like i've always been a person that i've always been very technological like i but outside of this, I'm also a graphic designer mm-hmm. um, and also a freelance illustrator. So like I also do do work on my laptop a lot. I work with like like an iPad a lot. I, I'm on like a lot of social media. Like I still feel like I can't even keep up, you know? Yeah. And I'm a young guy, you yeah. know? So like I feel like I can't even keep up. But I think it's maybe, but like maybe this has to happen for us to all 
all all come together in person who knows maybe yeah like, we'll all yeah but like i think it's like maybe are are we going to actually end up in that black mirror episode where like we're all looking at screens talking to each other or are we going to actually like stop and be like wait a minute this is too much maybe we need to connect more in person yeah and like kind of transgress in that way who knows you know yeah man but, i mean it's i think um, all these things are possible i really hope the latter yeah. i hope that we do begin to find a more balanced relationship with technology and we become more and more yeah. connected with our immediate environments and our immediate communities and holding space mm -hmm. together and three-dimensional reality as opposed to our virtual realities yeah. Cause I think they do have benefit, but there's something so powerful about being in the moment in person with the people you mm -hmm. love. And so finding ways to do that more and more is really important for sure. Um, one totally. thing I wanted to kind of circle back to, and it was just popping into mm -hmm. my mind, like back to your specific artwork, do you like mm -hmm. build any kind of like spiritual rituals around the creation of your work? Like what are some of the kind of like spiritual practices that you sort of find to be beneficial, not only to you personally, but to you creatively? So, um, but going back to like with like astrology, so I, so I'm an Aries, but like, mm -hmm. which is ruled by fire. Yeah. And I do light a lot of candles um when i am creating so like i not only have like candles that like smell all good but i also have candles that i like try to manifest more types of like like bubba different types of uh bubba energy into my home energy into my studio space um and i'll like usually drink some tea coffee mm. um i tend to like listen to like a lot of frequencies off of youtube <laughs> cool. so like i like yeah just like certain frequency just like certain frequency is like like 417 frequency i listen to mm -hmm. a lot um, are these like selfagio frequencies like that align with like the chakras yes. yeah man i yes. love that stuff too yes oh yeah 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 but i listen to to like all of them i listen to like the 528 hertz one which is like for your solar plexus and then mm -hmm. the 417 hertz which is for your sacral chakra um i like to use those a lot for like when i'm creating or like when I'm meditating or like doing tarot readings. Um, I also tend to like journal a lot before drawing nice. as well. Um, or I'll do like a form of like divination with like with like tarot cards as well. Um, or I'll like meditate before, you know, yeah. do yoga before. <laughs> yeah, cool. So, what kind of meditation practices do you like to do? Like in terms of like, are they so, concentration based or are they visualization based or you mix them up? I like to, so I'm like a very, um, I feel like I have too much energy sometimes where I'm like always trying to do too much. And I feel like meditation for me has to be something that's like a little bit more like relaxed. So mm -hmm. I have to like lay down and I usually just like listen to a frequency and just let my mind go, honestly. Yeah. Um, but like, I mean, I've done a lot of guided meditations over the years and those are really good um, when I'm like super busy and I like can't think straight, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I think a lot of the times I like try to, to just like let my mind go and then mm -hmm. um but like but like sometimes I like I, I may even fall asleep but I feel like when I wake up I always feel like so much better you yeah. know it's not like a typical type of like rest it's like more of like definitely I'll, I'll like wake up and I'll like but I'll like know what to do you know I'll, yeah. I'll wake up and I'll know what I have to do or like how I have to do it you know yeah, um, man. You're in that deep state of rest, like deep rest, not just like physiological rest, but mental rest, psychological yeah. rest, spiritual rest. And so totally. um, that's so powerful. I love like, uh, like, do you know about like yoga nidra practices, like where they're like these guided breathing practices that like relax your body, usually do them at the end of like a yoga practice, like in Shavasana, or just do them mm -hmm. on your own, like laying in bed. But basically, it's like almost like you just slowly connect with all the sensations of your body until they slowly almost dissolve into mm -hmm. like light, bliss, let it complete letting go. I love those kinds of practices yeah. too. I think varying your meditation practice is really important. And, and like what you said, like just being able to be aware of like the type of energetic signature that you have so that you know like what kind of meditative process will help balance you is so important because I think a lot of people mm -hmm. get out there and they just try one type or try another type and they're like, oh, I can't do this, not for me. But there are many different practices and ways in which you can enter that meditative space. So finding the ones that work for you and your particular makeup, I think is, is so crucial and being able to vary them. 
um, knowing when yeah. it's time for relaxation, meditation, when it's time for a concentration or visualization one. Um, I love mm-hmm. to meditate on speaking of candle flames. I love to meditate on candle flames a lot. There's something mm-hmm. just so there's such a powerful meditation just to sit and watch a candle burn out. It's just like unbelievably totally. powerful. So I think it's just so cool how you're finding these new ways of expression of your spirituality, how they're integrated into your artwork and your artwork is very, it feels very um, biographical too, in some sense. I know you speak about like your memory um, and sort of like thinking about like these, this relationship to your past and like experiencing these like dreamlike kind of states. And I feel like your artwork is very dreamlike. It definitely feels like I'm entering a dreamlike space when I look at them. And so I really just deeply appreciate so much like of what you're doing with your artwork and your illustrations. I mean, some of them are painting I saw and some are colored pencil. And you said you just kind of pick and choose based on what you're feeling that day. So recently I've been going more back into colored pencil um, because it's just like faster for me. Like I could do color studies very, very fast with color pencil, which is what I love about it. it's also just more natural to me. I mean, I started doing paintings to basically um, add more texture to some of the work I have. Like mm-hmm. I wanted to add more like physical texture to it. I mean, like growing up, I was definitely doing color pencils first and then painting. Um, but I've always enjoyed painting, but I think I'm like trying to develop more side of my painting side, but I haven't really like dove into that. I mean, I've just been kind of into, I've just been trying to make more work, I guess, at the moment. Like I. I tend to work kind of slow sometimes. Yeah. So I try to do something that's like a very fast medium like color pencil. Yeah. Um, I also love Prismacolor and how vibrant they are. Um, oh, yeah. And how they really just like, they just fly off of the the uh, canvas. It's beautiful. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, your and, work is so vibrant. It's amazing what you're able to achieve in terms of the level of saturation in your, in your pieces. Thank you. I mean... But like, also, it's just, um, but, but like outside of my work, like I, I would do like a lot of color studies, just like trying to match certain colors and everything. And I'll spend like hours doing that. Just like, oh, nice. yeah, like, I think that's like, like a big part of it, but it's also like definitely the like prism of color. I don't know, but I think like some painting, like there are some types of paint nowadays that get so saturated, but it's also, you have to worry about the light fastness is this gonna like mm-hmm. change color in like a hundred years or 50 yeah. years or 10 years or like a couple of days exactly <laughs> you know? yeah you no, don't really I, know yeah so yeah no i mean but, but it's just it's still incredible though your color choices like you i loved what you were saying earlier on in our conversation about how you're not only looking at color from like a visual perspective but energetically like thinking about yeah. the chakras or like we're talking about frequencies right like you're talking about how you like to listen to mm-hmm. those frequencies Well, like as anyone who studies color theory, I mean, you know that the reason we see color is just light. It's varying wavelengths of light. So we're literally experiencing varying frequencies. So when you can like be way more skillful with the kind of color choices you're using and aligning them with the content or the expression and the ideas that you're sort of exuding as well, it makes them even more powerful because there is this energetic sort of um, symphony you're creating between the form and the color and the energetic quality you want to express. So I definitely like, can I feel like looking at, I'm going to go back and look at more of your work, like thinking yeah. about it from that energetic lens, especially with your knowledge base and understanding of, of the frequencies, the chakras and how those are. I think it's so fascinating, Jared. I think it's, it's beautiful. Thank I mean, you. there's a, there's definitely in a, there's definitely this quality to your work that just for me just draws me in so effortlessly. And, um, and I just think what you're up to is amazing, man. I'm just so grateful to be able to connect with you on this podcast and be able to uh, learn more about you and the work you're doing and everybody out there who's listening hundred percent, check out Jared's Instagram, uh, TikTok or website. I mean, you can just give me some links we'll put in the show notes um, when this podcast (laughs) uh, releases though, but I feel like, uh, you know, we're about an hour right now. And I just think, you know, we've come to a really nice point in the conversation where I feel like we could tie a bow on it, man. And it's been an amazing time. I feel like it just flew by. So thank you. Thank you so much for for taking the time to be with me today. Yeah, totally. Thank you so much for 
for having me. This was an amazing time. And um, those were those were amazing speaking with you, Martin. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, for sure. And I feel like there's way more we can dive into. I feel like this is just like the yeah. opening of a conversation because there are so many things you said. I'm like, we, and that's one of the biggest problems I have as a podcast host. It's like, do you want to go down that road or do you want to go down this road? Like, yeah, there's so many, I know so many things that we could, we could just dive even deeper on. So maybe a, a, an episode down the line, we'd come back and we can dig into one of these topics more specifically, because I feel like there's more for us definitely to, uh, to share with each other. So, but for now, oh, let's, uh, let's call it a day and, uh, I'll definitely, uh, be in touch. We'll see you soon. Okay. Yes. Yes. I would love to speak with you again. Yes. See you soon, Martin. Okay. All right. Talk soon. Peace. Thank you all so much for tuning into this episode of Concerning the Spiritual and Art. If you like what we're doing here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can stay in touch and in tune with all the amazing offerings that we're going to be uh, bringing to this channel. Um, Thanks again for all your support. Super grateful and uh, yeah, excited to uh, bring more content your way. Peace, y'all.